Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for um, our second webinar, Let's Talk Strategy for Chum Gives. Um, for those of you who are already here, we'd love to hear who you are, what organization you're here representing today, and you can just let us know in the chat. We'll make sure the chat is working for you. Um, and then we'll get started in one minute. Awesome, thank you to everyone who is saying hello. We're excited to have you here. Um, and it, we'll let more people kind of come in. I think there's gonna be about 70 organizations or uh, people joining us today. Um, but a few quick housekeeping items we always like to note before we get started. Um, as you all probably know by now, this webinar is being recorded and it'll be posted in the Nonprofit Toolkit on the Richland Gives website under the um, Nonprofit Toolkit tab. Um, if you do have questions during the presentation, please feel free to send them over um, either through the Q&A button or you can send them through chat. Mara uh, is going to be kind of monitoring it while I go through everything. Um, we do have quite a few slides to get through today, so we're going to just go right ahead and get started. Um, but again, thank you to everyone for being here. We're excited to have you spending time with us. Um, my name is Sarah and I'm a project manager with Mighty Cause and we are the platform provider for Rich and Gives. Um, we, of course, also have Maura joining us today from the Richland County Foundation. I'm going to pass it over real quick to you, Maura, so you can say a quick hello. Good afternoon. Um, so far, we have about 70 nonprofits registered for Richland Gives. I would like registration to get up to about 110 nonprofits. So if you have friends in the nonprofit world, encourage them to register for Richland Gives before October 31st. Thank you, Sarah. Awesome. Um, all right, so we're gonna do a quick agenda slide. Um, our goal today is to really talk through prizes, to talk through different strategies, um, and to help you, of course, make your campaign a, a success this year. Um, we'll do a Q&A session at the end, so if you do have a question, you can just send those through. Um, we also wanna emphasize that we have a lot of just really great content to cover today. Um, and just keeping in mind that all of your organizations have different capacity levels for what you can take on for this year's event. So we do have a lot to cover. There's a lot of great material. We don't wanna overwhelm anyone. Um, but we do want you all to kind of challenge yourselves to try something new. If there's something that you've been curious about trying that you hear about in this webinar, whether that's like that, um, setting up, securing a new match, um, kind of doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising this year, whatever that is, just kind of make a little note um, and kind of work it into your strategy and maybe some new goals for your organization this year. Um, so let's get going. So what does your organization need to do? Um, so you're registered. Most likely, if you haven't registered, you're going to need to register to participate. Um, but once you're all set, you're ready to go, you're wondering what's next. Um, hopefully you've already kind of looked at the first webinar, which is all about getting started. That one talks about how to customize your organization profile, how to find different kind of reports, different tools and features that are available to you. Um, this year we did do a full kind of recorded demo, uh, which is really helpful. So I think if you haven't or if you haven't watched it or if you need kind of a refresher from last year to definitely go check it out. Um, that's listed in the nonprofit toolkit for you. Um, but once your page is customized and filled out, you are ready to start thinking about your strategies for this year um, and thinking about the different communication outlets that are available to you to reach your donors. Um, so you'll want to start really thinking about your goals. If you've placed any goals, if you haven't created goals, now is the time to think about what your organization wants to get out of this year's Richland Gives. Um, you'll also want to start thinking about kind of securing matching grants because you'll need some time to kind of get those out to different donors who you think would be a good fit for matching grants. Um, you'll also want to start thinking about how to engage your community and your supporters, thinking about who your ambassadors are and how they can really help you um, kind of get your campaign even further this year. And of course, it's a good time to just get excited because this is a really wonderful event. 
Um, and it's a lot of fun. And I know you all put in a lot of work. So real quick, we're going to show the resources that are available to you. Um, a lot of really great tools in the nonprofit toolkit. We have tips, tricks, FAQs, a bunch of kind of walkthroughs, support articles. If you're confused about anything on the platform, um, we just have a really kind of strong support library. Of course, you can reach out to our support team as well. Um, but definitely take a look at the nonprofit toolkit. This year, we also have a donor toolkit. So uh, one thing I'm going to plug in for you all is if you are communicating to donors, you want them to help you with peer to peer, whatever it is. This year is to really take some time, um, include the donor toolkit link in your communications that go out to your supporters, letting them know like, hey, this is available to you this year. It shows you how to do kind of peer to peer, how to set up a peer to peer for us, um, how you can donate, how you can find a cause. There's just a bunch of great stuff in there. Um, and just, of course, there's your important dates as well. Um, so make sure you just kind of keep checking that and keep an eye on it. Um, so we want to get started with your donation management and reports. I think this is a good jumping off point, just so like a quick reminder of what is available to you and what you can use to kind of create a campaign strategy, the different reports you can pull based on who's given to your organization before. Um, so this is kind of where you're going to want to look first when you're trying to kind of gather the data um, and pull the reports for like who to contact for this event. So uh, our reports section, your report section is divided up into five areas. So we have your donations, your offline donations, your recurring donations, um, uh, your retention and your disbursements. For a second, I thought I was counting six, but <laughs> still five. Um, so your donations and your offline donations. With Mighty Cause, the donation report, you're able to view your information associated with each donation made to your organization um, during the event. So at the top of the report, um, you are able to kind of filter by the 30 days. So that's kind of the default. If you wanted to get a different snapshot of the entire year, or if you wanted to go back a year, you would just have to custom create, fill in those dates because um, it's going to default to 30 days. Uh, you can additionally filter by campaign type. So if you wanted to see specifically Richland Gives 2021, you can filter your report by selecting the actual campaign that you participated in, the event you participated in. Um, you can also search by different donation types if you needed to find just offline donations or just online donations. Um, but it's a really helpful tool just for accounting purposes. Um, you can segment out different types of donors for future appeals. So this is one area you're going to want to check first uh, when you're if you don't you know already have this already pulled from a previous kind of last year's event. Um, but this is all downloadable. We also have recurring donations, which is really nice. Um, organizations, you all have the ability to manage recurring monthly donations that someone might have made on the Richard Gives platform. Uh, in the in the recurring donation section. So any recurring donations that were, cre were created for your organization are listed there. Um, again, super easy. All of this stuff is supposed to be very kind of user friendly. You can filter by status, page type. You can search specifically by a donor name um, and you can view all of that. Uh, and then of course, we also have your retention report, which we'll cover a little bit more. But that section is going to be really important for you because it's going to allow you to pull a list of unretained donors or retained donors. So people who have given to you in a previous Richland Gives campaign, um, which is going to be a good chunk of people who you're going to want to reach out to because they gave in a previous Richland Gives campaign. Um, and then, of course, we also have disbursements. This section, of course, is all of your disbursements. So if you, you know, previously participated, if you use the page kind of in a year round kind of way, you would see all of your disbursements there. Um, any adjustments as well. Um, let's see. One thing I do want to mention, and I will just plug it in here because I didn't really know where to put it in this slide. Um, but we have a new payment option available to donors this year. So we have a DAS payment option. Um, so uh, basically what this means is that there's a new drop down method that donors can select if they have a donor advised fund. So I do want to mention that in case you have any questions, you can ask them today. You can email us. 
Um, but basically, someone who has a donor advised fund will be able to select donor advised or other managed fund. And then they can make an intention to you in your organization as a donor during the campaign. Um, it's labeled an external payment method within your donation report, so it won't be listed as like online donation, even though it will be considered an online donation, the tag will be external payment method. Um, it's important to note that no funds are actually processed through the platform. If someone were to select donor advised fund, those um, kind of intentions uh, don't have any fees attached to them because there's no payment going through. Uh, but they will, however, be reviewed individually by the Richland County Foundation before being approved. Um, so then once the intention is approved, your organization is then notified by email of the intention. Um, it's a new kind of payment method option that we have. It kind of just came out. Uh, so if you do have any confusion or if you're curious, like we can talk more about it. Um, but one thing that's important to note is that Though it counts as an online donation, your organization is responsible for doing the post follow up. So trying to, to work with the donor who made the intention, um, work with the relationship manager to receive the payment post event. So that's just something to uh, kind of keep in mind. And we do have more information about this added to the um, to the rules page, uh, kind of specifically talking about this uh, new payment method. Um, I don't know, Mara, if you want to say anything about that or else we Each can year We have uh, advisors with donor advised funds at the foundation that wish to participate in Richland Gives, and they have done that in the past. Uh, this option this year will include people who have donor advised funds with like Fidelity or Charles Schwab. Um, Allie Watson, our senior community investment officer, includes information about Richland Gives and her communications to donor advisors. So our donor advised fund holders are very aware of Richland Gives. This just opens it up to other people with other donor advised funds. Yes, that's a great way of putting it. Um, all righty. So I want to move into adding offline donations. Um, one of the, of course, the most important aspects of online fundraising is also being able to track and manage the donations that come in that are offline donations. So any checks or anything like that, um, you of course can add those offline donations to your page. Um, but just a reminder that offline donations are not counted towards leaderboard totals or prizes. You can still add them to your organization page totals yourself though. So kind of just, showing on here a little bit how you can add them. It's super simple. You're going to go to the offline donation section um, and just click add offline donation. You'll be prompted. There'll be a little window where you can add your details for the offline donation. Um, and then you can just save it. Um, one thing to note is that if you made an error, if you accidentally logged a thousand dollars and it was only a hundred, um, you just need to delete the offline donation and then you can just re-add it. So once you've saved it, you can't make edits, but you can remove it and make uh, and kind of create a new one. Um, and then I also want to talk about retention reports, which I mentioned. This is going to be kind of a critical, helpful little piece for you if you've previously participated. Um, you can access this report in your reporting section. Uh, at the top of your retention report, you can filter and create the retention report you need. So through status, you can filter the report to show your retained or not retained donors. Um, you can also, of course, like I said, filter by event. So you can search retain, not retained from the 2021 event. Um, and then you can download the form. Super easy, very valuable information here. So make sure you incorporate this into your outreach plan for your donors. Um, now that I have talked all about reporting and admin, I'm going to switch it over to some more exciting things. Uh, Maura, you can take it away for prizes this year. <laughs> it is exciting, Sarah. This year we are offering, thanks to the generosity of donors at the Richland County Foundation, we are offering $100,000 in matching grant prizes. If you've done Richland Gives before, you are familiar with some of these prizes. However, we have totally revamped the prize structure. At the end of last year's event, we sent out a survey. And when I received those survey results, reviewed them and also reviewed the data about who is participating in Richland Gives, 
we came up with this new prize structure to make it, I guess, um, for the lack of a better word to say, more fair for all involved. So uh, the survey indicated that, you know, some of the comments were, well, we're such a small nonprofit, we cannot compete with some of the other nonprofits, or, you know, really, I'm just the one person running this nonprofit, you know, I do the best I can. So with all that feedback that we received last year, we now have three categories, and you can see those on the slide, small, medium, and large nonprofits. And then just the various uh, categories of prizes, uh, which following slides will show you uh, the various prizes. So on the leaderboards, um, I'm not sure what the next slide is. Okay, leaderboards. So we will have two leaderboards for each category. We will have most dollars raised and most donors. Um, so if you are a small nonprofit, you have a chance to win at one or two of the leaderboards, either most dollars or most donors. And that goes the same for medium and large nonprofits. So you see the places and the prizes that will be awarded for that. Now, if you do happen to, you can only win one leaderboard. <laughs> so um, I would suggest that you focus on a goal for each of these large categories. So for leaderboards, if you think you have a lot of donors, but not a lot of dollars, obviously you would uh, go after that goal of getting the most donors. A donor is defined by their email address. Um, so that's the new leaderboard prizes, most dollars and most donors. The golden tickets, uh, again, you know, I segmented those out into small nonprofits, medium nonprofits, and large nonprofits. So if, depending on where you are, you have your own category of golden prize tickets. So you can only win two golden prizes, but you have a chance to compete with those with like-sized nonprofits. And then towards the end of the day, uh, between four and five and five and six, it's all categories going after those golden ticket prizes. And then we will have a special golden ticket prize during the leaderboard watch party, uh, which will, the amount will be announced that evening. It will be for the six to seven o'clock hour. I really want to stress uh, more giving uh, during the leaderboard watch party. Uh, this year, the leaderboard watch party will be held in conjunction with the Richland Area Chamber Business After Hours. So my hope is that we get more donors uh, instead of just nonprofits at the party, and I think it will make for a fun evening. Matching grant prizes. Uh, Sarah is going to explain matching grants later in this presentation, but as a way to expand giving this year, we are offering a matching grant prize. Again, each category of nonprofit has a chance to win a $1,000 matching grant prize. We'll have two winners for each category size. And that will be done um, if you meet 100% of your matching grant that is posted on your Richland Gifts page, then you will be entered into a drawing for this prize. So for example, if we have 10 small nonprofits that reach this level of giving with a matching grant, we will randomly draw two prize winners uh, for the small nonprofit, two for medium, and two for large. So this is a new prize this year. Some additional exciting prizes, uh, at least they're exciting to me. I hope they're exciting to you. Uh, another way I feel that we'll be able to expand giving this year is by involving more of your supporters. And so that's where the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising comes in. If you notice on your organization page, there is a donate button and there is also a fundraise button. So uh, you can ask volunteers, board members, friends of your organization to set up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page on your behalf. And then they, if they raise at least $1,000 between November 14th and November 29th, they'll have a chance at a $750 grant prize that would go to that uh, nonprofit that they are supporting. I am going to send out information to um, 
previous Connection Fund members on how to accomplish this. Uh, Susanna Romer, who is with the uh, Richland Young Professionals, is also going to share this information with their membership and hopefully we'll get a lot of fundraising pages set up on your behalf. And the beauty of this is it introduces your, your organization to people that you may not even know. So that is one of the new prizes. Also, we have the prize from last year, $1,000 to the first 10 organizations across all leaderboard sizes that raised $10,000. But this year you have to get that via at least 10 donors. Um, and that I think opens that up to all sizes of nonprofits being eligible for that. Um, another new prize this year is we are giving out an award for the best page. So uh, this will be judged by people uh, like Sarah at Mighty Cause. Um, so you have to submit the form and uh, when you log into your page, you've been seeing this form for the past couple of days if you've been on your dashboard, your Richland Gives dashboard. But there is a very simple form for you to submit in order to be considered for this prize of having the best page. And that deadline to submit the form is November 11th. And uh, another new prize this year, uh, and you are eligible just by attending today's webinar, and the webinar held in September, we will randomly draw a prize for uh, the webinar attendance prize. So this is uh, what I was speaking about on the previous page. Um, so I know a lot of pages out there look wonderful and have a lot of great information. So uh, I think everybody should submit their page for this prize and it's pretty simple to do. During the leaderboard watch party, uh, we draw some other prizes during that time. And you can see those listed here. A new one for this year, uh, since we are at Mid Ohio Education Center, and uh, this year I wanna put the word party back into the leaderboard watch party. So instead of spending um, the time showing videos and talking, uh, we are going to uh, have a DJ there and we will break into the party every 15 minutes or so to announce some of these prizes. So uh, if you bring a poster for display to the leaderboard watch party, uh, you will be considered for that second prize of $250. And I would say that this would be your typical poster size. They will, we will have um, wooden easels to display those posters. And I would suggest that you put that poster on some foam core so that it's easy to display on an easel. So it doesn't have to be a huge poster, but I thought it would be a good way to decorate uh, Mid-Ohio uh, and give the people who are attending the party a little bit more information about your nonprofit. Um, we also each year give out what we call video grant awards. And those go to the previous year top performers. So I wanna let you know who received those video grant prizes uh, for this year. We work in conjunction with DRM Productions and uh, they produced a two to three minute marketing video for the nonprofits who were top performers during last year's event. So the winners of that um, prize include St. Peter's School, North End Community Improvement Collaborative, Linden Road Presbyterian Church, Love in the Name of Christ, Kingwood, the Chamber Foundation, Pat Crocker Breast Cancer Fund, Mansfield Art Center, and Starfish Project. So you have seen those videos at previous parties. We will be playing those videos uh, on monitors around the room during the leaderboard watch party. And it gives you another um, remarkable prize to go after this year if you would like to have a nice marketing uh, video done by DRM Productions. And we appreciate the partnership with DRM uh, because they give us uh, these videos at a discounted price, which everybody appreciates. Awesome, thank you. I love those videos I watched um, last year and I, they're just so incredible. Um, Alrighty, so we're going to get into some kind of heavy duty campaign strategy for you all. 
Um, so first things first, to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to talk about, we'll talk about setting goals and how you can utilize mini goals to get to your large overall goals. We'll talk about peer to peer fundraising and how you can use it. Um, we're going to go kind of very much in depth on matching grants, um, email strategy, a little bit about social media strategy, and then kind of real super quick post giving event tips uh, to help close the loop after the event. Um, so when setting goals for your campaign this year, you're going to want to start to consider what your large overall goals are for your campaign. So that means, do you have a donor count goal? Do you have kind of what different metrics are you looking at to kind of think about your success for this year's event? Uh, number of donations, a dollar raised goal. Um, by creating large overall goals, you can then figure out how to keep your campaign going, keep up the momentum, and keep work to working towards your large goals over the giving period and on the day of the event. Um, of course, the trick to making the most of your giving event is to sustain your fundraising momentum. I know, you know that's a big uh, thing for everyone, is how to continue getting donations throughout the day. And one of those ways is to set mini goals. So your mini goals are going to be little tiny goals that kind of help put the pie together um, slice by slice, help generate buzz and build excitement so that donors can see, oh, they only need, you know, 10 more donors to get to this larger goal, whatever it is. Um, the mini goals are gonna help sustain your fundraising momentum, get people excited, help you reach your overall goals. Um, of course, to set many goals, you'll think about these overall goals, what you need to raise, and then just kind of break it down. So if your goal potentially is to get, say, 20 new donors during the giving day, um, you can break that down into halves and quarters, kind of create different social media posts about it. Can you get us 10 new donors by lunchtime and then 10 more donors in the evening? Something that's a little more kind of breaking it down, helping donors see uh, how they can help you overall. Um, of course, you know, being like, we want to get 100 new donors, it's hard for people to visualize where you are at right now. So you're going to want to constantly up pe update people about where you're at with these goals as well. Um, and then be sure to keep in mind when your donors are most active during these uh, days, so you can adjust your hourly and section goals accordingly. So once you kind of create a timeline of your overall goals, breaking it out into mini goals, you can also go in and adjust based on where you are. Um, if there's a slow period and your goal is to get, you know, more donors, maybe you want to add in a matching grant during a quieter time to kind of shake things up, get a bit more momentum during slower kind of periods. Um, and then, of course, all of these little goals can help you when you're trying to reach a prize. So keeping in mind all the prizes that Mara went over, um, you can kind of use that as a framework for where you want to be and what kind of um, prizes and goals you should be setting. Um, activating your ambassadors. So when thinking about your goals, you also want to think about who can help you reach these goals. So not just the donor base, but also people who maybe don't have funds to give, um, kind of just overall ambassadors, people who are usually in your organization's inner circle, anyone who can boost your campaign and really help you extend your reach a bit further. Um, so this definitely is going to include your board members, volunteers, anyone who's highly engaged with your organization, staff members, and so on. Utilizing your ambassadors is uh, beneficial. It's going to help you break out of your list of existing supporters. Everyone's always, you know, trying to figure out how to engage new donors. Part of this is going to be asking people who are already connected to you to spread the word. Um, word of mouth, you know, telling people about why they're so passionate about your organization is going to really motivate people to look into you and kind of see if they want to also support you. Um, ambassadors can help you by simply sharing a link to your page with their social circle. Um, they can also share like a direct donate link. So something to think about in your strategy this year is going to be coming up with messaging to these ambassadors. People want to help you. They might not know how to help you. So coming up with a list of ways that they can support you is really beneficial. Um, kind of drafting an email that's like, what's your capacity level? Do you have time to create a peer to peer fundraising page? Or do you have time to just send a donate link to some family members, something like that? Um, giving people kind of different options and ways to support you is going to help people be able to support you just because everyone has, of course, just like your organization, different capacity levels. 
Um, so something to think about, uh, and then we're going to get into a bit more about, actually, I want to mention a bit more about peer to peer fundraising. Um, so a larger ask that sometimes can feel intimidating to people um, to make the ask, but it actually isn't intimidating at all is peer to peer fundraising. So this is basically a fundraising technique where you're deputizing kind of your supporters, your ambassadors to fundraise on your behalf. So outside of just sharing a link, um, or spreading the word to their social circle, they are actually creating a page and writing about their story, why they're passionate about you. Um, and then they can collect donations directly on their page that are then given directly to your organization. So these pages are directly connected to your overall organization page. Um, it's pretty much a landing page that they can share. They can add their own photos. They can add their own story. They can add their own goals. If their goal is to raise, you know, a thousand dollars for your organization, they can set that goal. Um, and it's a fun little way for them to be engaged. Again, everyone has different capacity levels. Some people might not want to create a fundraising page, but definitely providing people different options and ways that they can support you is a really good idea. Um, we are going to get into matching grants. We have a lot of information on this, especially since there are prizes associated with matching grants this year. Um, so a little bit of information. If you're brand new to matching grants, they're a really great strategy for driving donations during the giving day. Um, matching grants are basically a large donation that you're going to use as a tool to help you fundraise and solicit for more donations. Um, so depending on your organization's operating budget, which you saw in, in the matching grant prize slide, um, that is going to determine which matching grant prize you are trying to qualify for. Uh, and that will determine the amount that you would need to secure for a matching grant to be in the running for that prize. Um, so depending on the amount of money, there's different kind of amounts that you saw, you're going to need to think about how to secure those funds. Um, you can ask an individual donor if you have a board member, a local business, um, a community partner who would be willing to provide a grant to your nonprofit. Um, depending on the amount, you're going to have to kind of weigh how to structure those grants. So you could ask an individual to donate a large lump sum, or if you are having trouble securing you know, one large donor, you can also ask a group of people to provide a match. So you could always ask your board members to come together and donate, you know, contribute that $10,000 match. Maybe you have um, a couple different community um, kind of businesses that don't have the funds to give you a 10k match up front, but they would be more than happy to give you half of it. So maybe you do a joint match. There's different ways that you can kind of come together and create these matches. Um, of course, you can also um, just create little matches as well. Uh, like we said, you don't have to reach for all of these prizes. So don't feel overwhelmed if you are unable to reach the match. Um, it's is a great growing opportunity for you. If you've never tried matches, you can ask um, somebody to even just donate or contribute as much or as little as they can, because all of this is going to be used to kind of fuel donations by others. So if someone uh, is willing to give you even $200 for the event, you can always ask them, hey, we would love to try a matching grant this year. Your $200 could help um, kind of fuel other donations. Um, so you can create small matches as well. They don't have to be huge amounts. Um, you can kind of dip your toes in and do little matches as well. Um, but you should consider if you're looking for large kind of gifts, if you have donors who give kind of in large amounts, those are definitely great people to prospect for a matching grant instead this year. Um, it is a really cool way to give them extra recognition. I mean, we all are familiar with different donors and how they like to be treated. Some like to be kind of in the shadows donating. Others like to be thanked and congratulated. So you know best your donors and which donors are going to be excited to provide a match. Um, you can, of course, make it as public or as private as you want. You can make the match anonymous. Um, you can share if it's a corporate sponsor, you can add a logo to the match. There's a lot of really fun ways to kind of create this uh, match for your organization. But at this stage in the game, you're going to want to definitely start making phone calls, sending out emails, um, reaching out to your large donors, reaching out to your kind of maybe local businesses that might be interested in, in providing a, a, some of, a lump of money for you to use as a matching grant. Um, and then as people are getting warm up, warmed up to the idea, 
you can kind of figure out the details and, and talk about what exactly that would look like. Um, when it comes to setting up your match, uh, we have a lot of kind of flexibility within this section, um, not to overwhelm. I mean, we just love providing you all kind of the ability to, to use it how it best serves you. So we want to give you options. Um, but once you've secured the matching grant, you'll need to set it up within your organization profile. So you can do a lot, like I said, within the Mighty Cause Matches tool. You can set a cap for donation matching. So you can set a limit where you'll match up to, you know, $100 of someone's donation so that someone doesn't come along and make a, say, potential $1,000 donation, which would be great. We all want those. Um, but that might deplete your match instantly and then all your momentum is gone um your social media posts everything you might have had planned is now you know out so you want to kind of think about how you can best stretch this match so that a ton of donors can take advantage of it everyone wants to kind of get a buy one get one it's exciting um so you can think about all the little details that go into setting up the match and it's fun you can kind of work through this and thoughtfully plan with um, the donor who is willing to give you the grant money um, so once you enter your matching grant on your Mighty Cause page, here is what will happen. Um, when the matching grant is live, donors are going to see a badge on your donate um, button on your organization page. It'll let them know that a match is now available. Um, Mighty Cause is also auto calculating how much of the match is being fulfilled. So when you're setting up your match, you have an option to include match value in your page metrics, which is exciting. Um, that means if you have a one for one to one match, if someone donates $10, you're going to see $20 added to your total because that $10 match is also being reflected. Um, really exciting, but one thing to note is that once you are ready and the match has been completed, you're going to want to hide those match totals. Um, we call it kind of fake money. Once your match is completed, you'll want to hide that fake money that's being reflected because once the match, the grantor goes in and either, you know, pays online, those funds are going to show up in your uh, totals. So if you don't hide them, they'll be double counting. So if you're ever confused and wondering why your match um, is completed, but your totals are looking weird, it's likely because you have not hidden the, um, I don't know if you can see this little icon right here, it's pretty small. Um, but it's likely because you've left it displaying and once it's completed and matched, you're going to want to hide it from your totals. Um, so just a little tip for you. Um, but you'll be able to see in your donations report which donations were matched and what amount. Um, there's going to be a nice little summary kind of block, we call it, that will appear on your Rich on Gives page that shows um, your live matching grants, shows the amount of still available remaining. Um, the Richland Gives actual event site is also going to have a tab that shows matching grants. So we're going to, so donors can go and they can actually click that page on the website and see what matches are coming up, which ones have already been completed. Um, as soon as your match is live and it is actively um, kind of accepting and matching gifts, um, donors can also filter the actual search to find organizations that have live matches. So matches are really wonderful opportunity and a lot of donors go in hoping to donate to organizations um, that have matches just so that they can definitely try to get their funds even further. They want to help you get your goals. Um, so if you have any questions on matches, uh, I feel like sometimes this is a tricky area to cover. So if you think of anything, you can let me know. Um, of course, you can also reach out to our support team. We deal with match questions all the time. Um, so that's available to you as well. Um, a little bit more, once you've kind of secured your match, you've set up your match, you're going to want to definitely promote your matching grant because in the end, your matching grant is a really wonderful marketing kind of tool and opportunity for you to use. Um, so first step is going to, of course, go to the matching grant tool. Um, like I said, there's different marketing tools already built into the platform. We'll have a little sticker on your donate button on your page, letting people know that your grant is live. Um, but when you're promoting your match yourself, you're going to want to think about adding information to your story. Maybe you update your about section real quick and you say, hey, we have a live match. Um, you're going to want to promote it on your social media channels, send out an email. Um, a lot of this stuff what I'm going to talk about is all coming down to kind of pre-scheduling. So you've worked hard to create your match, you've secured it, you've set it up. Don't drop the ball when it comes to kind of publicizing and pushing your matching grant. 
you know, you can set up a free Canva account, you can create graphics, you can pre-schedule, you can kind of customize little things that say, uh, we're halfway to our goal with our match, like, you know, we have an hour remaining type of things like that. You're going to want to talk about countdowns. Um, these, of course, countdowns, as we all know, create a sense of urgency within ourselves. If you get an email that says a sale is about to end, you're going to quickly kind of click that and try to take advantage of it. Um, so just kind of having that mindset of making sure you're getting the word out is going to be very, very helpful. And also the energy is going to help donors kind of stop what they're doing and take a look. Um, all right, so email strategy, of course, your email list is going to be one of the most important tools during the event for you. Um, emails are, of course, a direct line to your supporters, so you are pretty much in their pocket. Everyone is checking email on their phones. Um, unless someone's unsubscribed, you're going to probably land right into their hand, which is really great. Um, but in general, our tips are to keep emails relatively short, simple, skimmable. People are reading emails on their phones, you're reading your emails on your phones, think about the emails that you're receiving and which ones you close out of, because maybe there's too much content, there's too much words, there's too much happening. Um, people want to be able to get the message quickly and have a call to action. What do you want them to do with this email? Do you want them to click and go check out your live match? Do you want them to just uh, make a donation and then share this email with some friends? Um, kind of keeping it quick and to the point, thinking about how you read emails and then kind of modeling that and how you create your own emails. Um, of course, people are more than likely going to read an email that pertains directly to them. So we always recommend breaking out your email list and sorting different groups. We call it segmenting. So sorting donors into key groups. Um, you're going to have a key group of maybe one-time donors. You're going to have a key group of maybe volunteers, maybe board members. Hope, maybe you even have a group of large gifts, uh, donors that make large gifts. So you'll want to kind of craft the same message, but to different groups. Um, so if you have uh, an email that's going out that's all about, hey, we're in the runnings for, um, I don't know, we're getting close to our goal. Uh, we'd love for you to donate like a minimum donation of $10. That might not be the messaging you want to give to a donor who you know has in the past donated $1,000 or more to your organization. So kind of thinking about your email strategy, thinking about the messaging and who you're sending this messaging to is going to be really helpful. Um, if you're sending an email to a volunteers list, you're not going to want to just say, hey, give us some funds. We really need to reach our goal. You're going to want to kind of uh, deliver it in a way that's very thankful because they are obviously donating a bunch of time to your organization, which is incredibly valuable. Um, and just kind of thinking about uh, different ways that you can reach out to these people. And maybe some of your emails aren't always asking for money. Maybe they're asking for people to share your page. Um, and just like I said earlier, kind of giving your ambassadors, your supporters different ways for them to help you out uh, is a really um, a good strategy. Um, let's see, where else am I? Um, scheduling and timing is really important. So paying close attention to the timing of your emails. Um, we always, like I said, recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand. Um, have a template email ready to go for anything that you need to send out on the day of. If you have an, a message that goes out to encourage people like, hey, we're so close to this power hour, we're like, you know, second place and we'd love to be first. Here's what we need you to do. Having templated emails where you can just fill in the blanks is really going to be helpful on the day of. Um, and like I said, people are reading emails on their phones. Always send a test. <laughs> I've even sent emails to people where I haven't tested buttons and maybe the button is broken. So make sure you're sending yourself a test or preview and asking uh, somebody to kind of proof it for you. So send it to a friend, send a test, have them click all the buttons, make sure everything looks good before you send it out to your entire database. Um, social media strategy. Uh, we all know social media is a confusing platform because things are always changing, but the kind of gist of the entire thing is, is to stay in your comfort zone, go where your audience is, put the effort into the platform where you're most likely to reach your supporters and have the greatest impact. Um, a lot of social media strategy is coming back to pre-scheduling. Social media can take a big chunk of your time. So I recommend sitting down maybe one day and just drafting a, a couple different posts, creating a couple different templates. You can create a free Canva account. 
um, and kind of draft out different messaging that you want. If you have a matching grant that you know is going to be live, create a post, schedule it. Um, if you have a plan to thank donors, create a template so that all you have to do is add the donor name uh, and then you can just post it to Facebook. Um, so really, also, if you have the ability, it's nice to assign someone on your team specifically to social media, just because it can take a lot of energy. But you are going to want to be using your social media as an outlet during the day, um, creating the stories if you're on Instagram type of thing, keeping at the front of people's kind of views, kind of showing them what you're doing, keeping them updated. Did you win a prize? Letting them know, because these are people who are contributing either their time, their money, their energy, sharing with their friends. So they're going to want to be involved in your success as well. Um, as far as what does well on social media, I think we're seeing a lot of videos. So you can even uh, pre-record some videos. Maybe you have some testimonials that you want people to give. You can ask some volunteers to create a little video and maybe they send it to you. And then during the day, you have these little promotional videos where other people are advocating for your organization. So it's kind of getting creative in uh, what you do and even outsourcing it a little bit is really helpful. So if you have someone who's really good at social media, you can get their input on what they think they could help you with. Um, and our last kind of step is about closing the loop. So we do have a post event webinar that I encourage all of you to sign up for um, and it's in the nonprofit toolkit. Um, it's December 6th at 2pm and it's a week after the event. Um, we're going to go over just a bunch of different strategies for how to thank donors, how to take a deep breath once the event is over because you all have worked so hard. Um, but something to think about while you're doing this and in the kind of flurry of getting ready for an event, you can sometimes forget to how to close the event afterwards. The follow up is super important. Like I said, your donors, your ambassadors, your supporters, they're all going to want to be um, involved and celebrate in your success. So thinking about how to close the loop, whether that means you are funding for a new piece of equipment, um funding for more materials you're just going to want to think about how you update and send emails or a newsletter or something to these donors um, and people who have advocated for you during this event uh, one thing to also consider is to have an onboarding plan in place because you will most likely get a couple new donors if not a lot of new donors um, and you want to kind of foster that relationship with them and make sure that they feel seen appreciated um, if you collect email addresses, you can send them a welcome packet, um, kind of have a fun little onboarding plan in place, because as we all know, it's hard to get new donors. Um, so when you do get one, you want to definitely like make them feel seen, um, make them a part of your organization's family, uh, because that is what's going to really make people feel like they are part of you and they want to keep being a part of your success, kind of being involved and keep giving to you. Um, so that every year when you do Richland Gives, you know, you can reach out to these people or even more during the year, whatever your kind of plan for fundraising is. Um, and then, of course, our support is available to you uh, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 Eastern will be available for the entire event, of course. Um, but we also have a stellar library of support articles. We have a ton of blog posts. If you're feeling confused or if you need kind of someone to kind of guide you or give you a little push in a different direction, or if you want to try something new, um, you can reach out um, with any questions or anything like that. So I know it was a ton of content. Um, hopefully you were able to pick something out that you are interested in, something that you want to try, maybe this year that you haven't tried, um, but really just thinking about your goals, thinking about how you can push yourself a little further this year, um, just some, some good ideas for you all. Uh, if anyone has any questions, we can take those now, or if Mara, you want to add anything? Um, there were some questions during your presentation, and I typed the answers into them. Um, oh, good. So the one was, how can we better utilize IRA and qualified charitable distributions during Richland Gives? Um, I answered, this is not currently an option. However, we are testing the waters with donor advice fund donations. And another thought on that is you could, if you know people have IRAs and want to give to your organization, 
you could solicit that from them in advance of November 14th because there is a lag time between when you request that, when a person requests that, and when you actually receive it. So if you do receive it during uh, the giving period, which is 7 a.m. on November 14th through 7 p.m. on November 29th, you can add it as an offline donation. Awesome. I'm looking at the questions you answered. Good ones. So everyone can see those, correct? Uh, that's a good question. I uh, don't remember. <laughs> I don't usually. <laughs> I'm not on the other side of the question portal. So if anyone wants to let us know, we can always answer them. Oh, OK. They can see the answer. So we don't need okay, to good. Uh, repeat that. But um, if there's any new questions, put it in the Q&A and we can answer them. You overwhelmed them with information. I, know. <laughs> I always think about that. Sometimes it's quiet. But there's a lot of good stuff. So don't feel too overwhelmed. And it's a recorded webinar, so you can revisit it. You can look at the slides. We'll get those uploaded to the toolkit for you. Um, Any other questions? I'm not seeing any. No, I, I don't see any new ones. Okay, no worries. Well, if you come up with anything, you all can always reach out to our support team. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, good, you are very supportive. We're excited to be here for you all. So um, good luck. Uh, let us know if you need anything and we will upload this to the toolkit for you all. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Great day.